Hello, I'm Bobby Summers, and I'm here today because after my Let's Play of Loom, I was contacted by a group that is putting together their own fan-made sequel to Loom called Forge. And uh, yeah, I think I mentioned in my videos that LucasArts originally had plans to make a couple of sequels, but they never really, never really got to work on them. They just kind of moved on to other things. So I think it is so awesome that people today, like 20 years later, are still remembering these old games and you know, wanting to expand the universe and kind of you know, build on it. I think it, I think it is great. You know, they're kind of putting uh, putting right what ones went wrong. So uh, yeah, I did play. I've played it. You know, testing it out, and I played it full screen. But for recording, I want to do a window. And the resolution is 320 by 200. That, that's going to make a very small window. It's only like about that big, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and double it. Yeah, and see, 640 by 400. That's closer to what my previous videos have been. And it's a, it's a nice size for uh, playing and recording. And I am just blatantly ignoring the warning not to do that because I, I did test it out and it works fine. So, uh, let's go. And Quill of the Wisp is the company. And hopefully, hopefully got all the blue lines, it's hard to tell. Previously in the age of the great guilds, and miles off the mainland coast lies Loom, an island home to the Guild of Weavers. A young woman by the name of Signa Threadbear used the Great Loom to restore life to her stillborn son. I just want to pause a moment here because this is something I think in the uh, in the audio drama, which I linked to in the first video of my Let's Play of Loom. Um, it I believe that uh, well I know that she gives birth to a dead baby, and then she. Uh, yells at the elders to do something because pretty much all the babies are die are b being born dead or like you know, or their hoods over soul sucking vortex or something uh, but the elders won't do anything so she sneaks into the loom at night and spins a gray thread into the loom and then out pops a baby and that's bobbin so i don't know about this thing about restoring life to her stillborn son. I don't know where that comes from, if the guys behind this game know something I don't. Uh, but I just want to comment on it, and now that I have, let's, uh, let's get back to the intro. Punished for crimes against the guild, Signa was transcended and condemned to spend her life away from her now thriving son. As the years passed, the young boy, Bobbin, grew tall and slender, wise but lonely, and in the shadows, chaos began to spread through the weaver's pattern. As chaos began to near, the elders in the Guild of Weavers left the island, leaving Bobbin alone with no answers to many of his questions. It was only through chance that Bobbin was able to use the elder's distaff to rescue Dame Hetchel, who encouraged him to begin his journey. Knowing only to search for a flock of swans entrusted with the weaver's distaff, Bobbin traveled across the sea to his destiny. For the first time in his life, Bobbin encountered the sights of Crystal Guard, sculpted by the Guild of Glassmakers. Yeah, I remember those guys. Clarity above all, my son, or whatever he was saying. The Ovis Glade, where the Guild of Shepherds make their home and sing their songs. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember having a name, but that, that's cool. I think Ovis is like, yeah, I think it means sheep, like in Latin or something. And finally to the forge, stronghold, and city for the Guild of Blacksmiths. To gain access to the Blacksmiths Guild, a thoughtless bobbin chose to trade appearances with a poor boy named Rusty Nailbender. Shortly after, Rusty simply happened to be eaten by a dragon. Rusty, to say the least, was not pleased, but he carried on to the afterlife like all dead do. 
Yeah, he doesn't look too happy. Within the forge, it was revealed to Bobbin that Bishop Mandible of the Guild of Clerics had conjured a plot to release an army of the dead upon the land. In trying to stop him, Bobbin had been taken prisoner by the bishop, where he would use Bobbin's distaff for his own devices. Through the bishop's actions, the pattern had been torn apart and portals to the afterlife began opening in graveyards all across the mainland. Legions of undead began to unleash itself upon the world. Also revealing itself was Chaos, who would become the world's greatest threat in mere moments. Chaos quickly killed the bishop and gained the power of the guild. Bobbin had fallen into one of the rifts in the pattern, finding himself in the afterlife and witnessing firsthand the destruction the dead ones had begun to cause. Through the portals, Bobbin returned to the blacksmith's valley and was confronted by the ghost Rusty. Rusty explained that Chaos has taken control of his home, the forge, and transformed it into a floating storm cloud fortress. Oh no. As a token of forgiveness for Rusty's death, Bob I think I think it's apology. Anyway, Bobbin was able to restore Rusty's body so that he could go save his guild. Returning to Beyond the Pattern one last time, Bobbin found himself at the shore of wonder, and for the first time in his life, he was able to speak with his mother, the Swan. After some guiding words, Bobbin returned to the Island of Loom to meet Chaos in a final showdown. <sighs> with guidance from Hetchel, Bobbin successfully unmade the Great Loom, at last protecting the Weaver's secrets from the hands of Chaos and kicking butt in the process. This victory was short-sighted, however. Yes. Though the Weavers have escaped beyond the reach of Chaos, all those still alive on the inside are condemned to domination under Chaos and the Dead Ones. Nice job breaking it, hero. And so clo close the story of Loom. We now invite you to share the story of Forge. Forge! After Rusty's fateful experience with the dragon, he passed on into the afterlife. Following the ways of his people, Rusty had been taught to know what to expect. And rightly so, he had been greeted kindly by the blacksmith guard, gatekeeper of the Haven of Blacksmiths. Anticipating peaceful eternity, nothing could have shocked Rusty more than the moment Bishop Mandible rent the pattern and the evil dead ones came back. <sighs> Okay, I think this part is going to be part of the real game, hopefully, because it's kind of going a little too fast to read. So I hope this is like an interactive part at the beginning of the game. Uh, so basically, okay. Okay, so returning to the drawbridge of the forge, Rusty found only a single man, one of his father's most trusted leads, near death. His dying words led Rusty to discover a secret hidden in the bronze tombstones on the cliffside overlooking the valley. Cast within the solid metal mass had been placed what must have been one of the last surviving pieces of blacksmith's legend, the Gauntlets of the Blacksmiths, which is why we have this tech demo today. However, upon discovering the secret, the earth beneath his feet gave way, and Rusty fell deep underground. Uh-oh. Weakened by the fall, and unable to contain the full power of the gauntlets, the sparks contained within them broke free, leaving Rusty depleted and unconscious. Luck had been with Rusty that day, for the rock slide had caught the attention of Bricks, a member of the Guild of Vintners, or winemakers if you prefer. And Rusty just appeared out of nowhere. Bricks found Rusty and took him to his lodgings where he tended to his wounds. And it's uh, old Krusty the Clown. While Rusty regained his strength, Bricks began to tell him how he had commissioned this cave tunnel from the Guild of Miners. Uh, something about fire wine. He went on to suggest that Ren Rusty should venture to Sable Shaft, underground city of the Guild of Miners so that they can help him get back to the surface. Rusty was granted an audience with the magnates, but was denied his request for transportation to the surface.
they had determined it was more likely he was a spy from the Order of Woodcutters than his tale of chaos and the dead ones being true. Not that they bothered to go upstairs to check or anything. Uh, and I didn't know the woodcutters and the miners had such a big rivalry. I mean, I don't even know. I don't even know where they would overlap. But uh, anyway, stranded miles below the surface, Rusty began to feel truly helpless. That, that is pretty cool. Like it's got like glowing tapestries to light light it up. That's pretty cool. But with the help of a new friend, Mirror Universe Spock, no. Professor Mason Penumbra of the Miners. Uh, perhaps Rusty will find a way to the surface and save his guild. This concludes the preview. Please click on the menu button for the tapestry selection or the tutorial button to experience the blacksmith's gauntlets firsthand. Well, that is what we're here for. Let's check out these gauntlets. Salutations! I am Professor Mason Penumbra of the Guild of Miners. It has recently been my pleasure to meet the acquaintanceship of a young boy named Wellrot Nailbender, heir apparent of the Guild of Blacksmiths. After some intensive research, I have found that Rusty is indeed in possession of a pair of the legendary blacksmith gauntlets. What are the gauntlets, you ask? I guess I shouldn't be too surprised that you are not privy to their existence. The gauntlets of the blacksmiths are a construct, a manufactured garment. Gloves, you see. Here is a representation of a complete pair. At first glance, they do look rather baroque, but there is something unsuspectingly unique about these little mittens. Adorned across the knuckles are eight crystalline receptacles. See them, yes? Well, contained in each of these little gems is a spark. Just now, did you see one flash? Remarkable, isn't it? Pardon, what is a spark? <clears throat> yes, of course. The sparks housed within these gems are not your everyday random electrical discharge nor are they an equivalent to the stray glowing particles cast off a hammer meeting hot steel. No, not at all. In the height of blacksmith mastery, these sparks were engineered to reflect the sum knowledge the guild had gathered. You see, for every metalworking technique or property the blacksmiths have conquered, there also exists a relative schematic to detail the process. Blueprints, if you will. Thus the sparks through the gauntlets are a method to unleashing these schematics and their effect at a whim. Tempering, luster, resonance, forming, techniques an artisan would spend a lifetime perfecting could be reproduced by a novice in an instant of metaphysical splendor. However, the consequences of their achievement were immediate. The demand for true skilled labor declined. Unemployment culminated in revolt. An intercontinental society was not willing to tolerate such an imbalance of power between the guilds. Sounds kind of like what happened to the weavers. Inevitably, the use of the gauntlets was prohibited and most pairs were ordered to be destroyed by the council at Elves Tree. It seems though that at least one pair has survived. Well, mostly survived. It's not my fault. These things didn't come with instructions. Oh, Rusty, greetings. I was educating our guest about your gauntlets. Though my example below does not resemble your neglected pair. Oh. Much better. You should count your blessings that you at least get to start with three sparks. Hmm. Starting with three sounds familiar. Have you been practicing your casting? Practice? I've got my home to save, remember? Chaos, blacksmiths, my family, the dead war? Yes, yes, I remember all of that. 
But you must remember this is a tech demo, and you and I are only here to demonstrate the new graphical user interface designed specifically for this game. Well, I suppose I've been waiting 20 years to save my family. What's a little longer? I, I hope that's a reference to the time between games and not he's been underground for 20 years. Splendid, read back to me what you remember about our last lesson. I'm sure our guest wants to hear. You told me to look closely at the objects I come across because some might let me see weird designs. Schematics. Yes, yeah, schematics. The same way that Bobbin could see and hear the drafts in his mind, these gauntlets give me the ability to see the schematics of the building blocks of life. Then alter them the way any blacksmith normally can. But this time, with magic. Not magic, science. Physics. And those schematics can do much more. So have you been practicing your drawing? I broke on my chalk, teacher. You daft child, drawing on the grid. You do remember the grid, don't you? Yes, professor, and I've been trying, but I never get past the first point. Are you remembering to left click and hold the button down? Hold the button down, I may have forgotten that part. Humor me, Rusty. Attempt to draw a simple line on the grid below, beginning by clicking on the glowing dot and tracing the silhouette. And when you reach the end of the silhouette, release the mouse button. Okay. Um.